Alrighty, and welcome back to the Cultology Podcast. My name is Parker, and in today's episode, I want to dive into um, a Peter Queen, Peter Queen, Peter King, um, and his weekly breakdown article. He talks about um, you know news in the lead that he's hearing. Obviously, um, some of this is coming from the owners' meeting in the past week or so. Some things he's hearing around the league. Um, obviously, one of those things being Bryce Young has a lot of fans inside of the Panthers. Houston, could they potentially not take a quarterback at number two? Um, he's urging the Carolina or not Carolina, Arizona Cardinals not to trade their pick until draft night because he thinks that's obviously when you'll see the highest stakes, um, the highest pressure by some of these GMs to make that move and splurge. Obviously, um, especially if that theory two does play out and Houston doesn't take a quarterback, that could cause teams to really want to move up and splurge. Um, but obviously, this being a Colts channel predominantly, we'll discuss the Indianapolis Colts scenario he has outlined here. Um, the Indianapolis Colts are a mystery team right now. Um, very big week for Indy. The Colts, who have the fourth and 35th pick in the top 50, are working out CJ Stroud, Young, Richardson, and Levis. Um, the Colts are in a good but not great spot. After the last five seasons, having five different starting quarterbacks, they need to get off the QB merry-go-round. Um, but if they don't believe in Richardson or Levis, they can't force it. Again, that was one of his main arguments with the Houston Texans potentially not taking Stroud. Um, if Levis is, or if potentially not taking Stroud, if um, the Panthers take Bryce Young because they don't necessarily believe he he's the right fit for them. If it's not the guy they originally wanted, which was Bryce Young. Um, so again, that similar point is here. Like if you can't force this decision, right? Especially if you know this is what's going to be depending on Ballard's career. Um, where are we going here? They may uh, look for options of trading down or picking Hendon Hooker. Coming off that ACL surgery, he's likely going to miss most of 2023, which would mean Gardner Minshew's paying, playing at the start of the season, and that's pretty important for Ballard after four straight years without a playoff win. Like basically saying, hey, you know, I don't think that's a feasible solution if Ballard wants to have a job come uh, come October, November, December, right? That brings us to Lamar Jackson. After Jackson tweeted last week that he'd be at, that he'd asked to be traded, there was speculation the Colts would be interested in part because of the desperation of owner Jim Irsay. And the guarantee, if the guarantees weren't stupid, um, I think Colts would be interested. My bet is the Ravens would take the fourth pick in the draft solely for Jackson. Let me repeat that. My bet is the Ravens would take the fourth pick in the NFL draft for Jackson solely. I think Peter King is a very dialed in individual in the NFL. I don't think many of you can disagree with that. His connections within the league, his team, and so on and so forth. I think his opinion and value, I think he's not not to say he'd be perfect, but he says again, let me read it. My bet is the Ravens would take the fourth pick in the draft solely for Jackson. Interesting. Everybody's so caught up in two. It's going to take two ones, two, two ones. Says who? Says you? Again, if you're convinced like I am, all these teams mean it when they say no. Repeatedly say no. Lock the door. Take the key out. Throw it in the backyard. Dig it in a hole. So on and so forth, right? Come on now. The Colts didn't. They kept their mouth shut. They said, we'll consider all of our options. And if Peter King thinks, hey, a four could get it done, Maybe he's called around. Maybe he has some connections within the Ravens. Maybe he just has a hunch or feeling that that's all it would take. Maybe that he knows something you know, he can't fully go out and report on because it's not credible enough or so on and so forth. But he's got it on good word. Hey, this relationship like we hear, it, it's turned to sour. It's, it's never going back. It's never going to be uh, sprouting a new flower again. My bet is the Ravens would take the fourth pick in the NFL draft solely for Jackson, but I can't see the Colts getting involved with Jackson having the injury history over the past two years. 34% of the Ravens offensive snaps missed in 21 and 22 with Jackson starting and finishing one of Baltimore's 12 um, December and January games over the last two years and winning a fully guaranteed contract. Um, rampant speculation, some fueled by Jackson, is that Baltimore has offered him three years pat so are fully guaranteed and it wasn't good enough so again lamar has told us it's just been that three years fully guaranteed 133 and he's saying that's just not that's just not good enough um and again that's kind of what he's saying here some of his fueled by jackson it is that baltimore has offered three years pat fully guaranteed and it wasn't good enough obviously that's the three years 133 
So if the Colts came out at three years, 150, three years, 160, right? And had to give up a pick. Granted, it'd be feeding into it. But again, you're going to have to pay a little bit. We're in, we're in the Indianapolis market. You're, we're going to have to pay a little bit of coin to take them off your hands, especially a player that good. And if he thinks it's just going to take one pick. Now, Peter King, get it out of your brain. Where's the report? Peter King saying, to his best confident knowledge, a f- number four overall would get it done. Obviously, you'd have to negotiate with Lamar. But number four would get it done. If it if it, number four gets it done, I'm sending it in. I'm not even I'm not even waiting to hit, you know, waiting to see it's done. If it's just number four, all the little narrative that everybody's playing along with with two number ones, it's done. It's just number four. It's done. It's been done. It'll be done. Again, if you're rooting for this scenario like myself. Come on, Raiders. Come on, Titans. We need you to trade up. We're putting all our eggs in those baskets. We Because that'll just really force his hand. That'll absolutely force his hand. And if that's the case, if he was going that way regardless, it'll just make it that much more sweet when we get a stomp on Richardson and the Titans and Bryce Young and the Texans or whatever, Levis and the Texans, whatever it ends up being, however it shapes out. <sighs> Again, Point, t- can somebody in the comments point to a scenario where a quarterback of this level and magnitude, former MVP, requests to get traded or whatever and doesn't? I'll point you to every example that has, right? We just went over in a prior video. There's no way he's going back. He drew the line in the sand. It's done. What are you hearing in the news this week? Oh, Ravens, are, can, can we, can we, we're still open and optimistic. Lamar will come to the table. He put he, he did your coach that dirty. He He's letting you know it's it's. You're the opposition now. You're, you're no longer on friendly terms. You're the opposition. They, they just don't understand how Lamar operates. They had that long to get with him. Come on now. I'm on the outside looking, and even I could pick up on these social cues. Thank you for tuning in.